Hello, my name is Dr. Robert Findling. I'm the director of the Division of Child and Adolescent Psychiatry at University Hospitals Case Medical Center, and I'm a professor of psychiatry and pediatrics at Case Western Reserve University. Now, in a previous blog, I spoke about factors associated with placebo response in randomized controlled trials that involved antidepressants in young people suffering from major depressive disorder. Now, today, in this posting, I'll be talking a bit about the safety and outcome of teenagers who suffer from major depressive disorder and are treated with placebo under the auspices of a randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled trial. The results I'll be reviewing are from a paper that was recently published in the American Journal of Psychiatry. Now, young people who are treated uh, with antidepressant uh, in an open-label fashion in a clinical setting often uh, benefit and respond at reasonably high rates. Now, however, when rigorously tested, many of these agents prove not to be superior to placebo in randomized controlled studies. So, for that reason, many believe that placebo controlled studies are still necessary in order to most stringently evaluate a medication's efficacy and safety in the treatment of young people suffering from major depressive disorder. However, one key consideration in determining uh, whether or not a study design that includes placebo is ethically appropriate <coughs> pardon me, is the assessment of the risks associated with placebo treatment. Now, the paper I'm talking about today examined youths who participated in the treatment of adolescent depression study, or TADS. Now, I, I should mention uh, that I was a site co-investigator for this study. In TADS, 439 young people were randomly treated with one of four interventions, fluoxetine, placebo, cognitive behavioral therapy, or the combination of cognitive behavioral therapy versus cognitive behavioral therapy plus fluoxetine for an initial 12 weeks. So there are four treatment arms, 12 weeks of intervention. Well, the 112 teenagers who initially received placebo subsequently could receive clinically indicated open-label active treatments for 24 weeks after their 12 weeks of participation. Well, in this paper, the authors found that although differences in response were present between placebo and uh, the active treatments after 12 weeks, differences in response were not present at the end of study participation. Certainly an important consideration. But Besides response, risks is another important factor. What else was found out about risks? Well, serious adverse events rates did not differ between the placebo-only uh, groups and the active treatment groups. Similarly, uh, these groups did not differ in the rates in which they received rescue procedures that were available to reduce the risks associated with study participation. Now, important information can be obtained when methodologically stringent placebo-controlled studies are conducted, it's particularly in juveniles suffering from major depressive disorder. Now, the results of this study are important uh, because they provide evidence to suggest that placebo treatment may not be associated with either non-response or injury to patients uh, with follow-up interventions over time. Now, please feel free to discuss or to comment on what I've talked about today. Uh, by clicking on the Discuss link button located beneath the video screen. Now, I'm Dr. Robert Findling. Thank you for watching.